So everybody's talking about Afghanistan. Guess what? We, we, you want to know how, how Afghanistan got started? You want to know how the Taliban actually got to be in control of Afghanistan? Do you want to know? Because before they weren't. How, where did the Taliban come from? Well, Hillary Clinton is here to tell us. Kind of moving in and out of Pakistan. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. Oh, really? And we did it because we were locked in this struggle with the Soviet Union. Oh. They invaded Afghanistan. It's Russia's fault. <laughs> it's Russia's fault. It's always Russia's fault. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And we did not want to see them control Central Asia. And we went to work. And it was President Reagan in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what? Sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> Let's like deal great... with the ISI and the Pakistani military. You know what? Sounds like a great what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong with imperialism? Sounds like a great idea. Why don't we just start making decisions for other countries and how they should run their thing? I, 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 what could, sounds like a great idea. Let's what, if, what an interesting definition of work, too. Like, ah, oh, what'd you do today at work? <laughs> well, I work. gave a bunch of money for weapons to these people so they can kill these other people, and hopefully <laughs> it works out. We'll know more on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Let's get to work. Get to work? Let's get to work bombing the, some of the poorest people in the world. Let's get to work. And let's great. Let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. And we, guess what? They retreated. They lost billions of dollars, and it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. So there's a, a very strong argument, which is wasn't a bad investment to end the Soviet Union, but let's be careful what we sow because we will harvest. So we then left Pakistan. So, uh, I, by, by the way, um, she described the war. She described uh, it's an investment. We we created this terrorist organization called the Taliban, right wing fundamental crazies. Uh, and what could go wrong? Put them in charge of a country because we're afraid of Russia. Uh, anyway, so we've been inventing our enemies, uh, forever. We've been, ever since World War II, we've been inventing our e enemies, right? We went into Iran in 1953, overthrew their government, and, and that led to the Ayatollah and the government that's in Iran today. Uh, look what we did in Libya. Uh, we invented the Al-Qaeda. Uh, ISIS got invented, uh, when we went into Iraq. We invented Taliban, Al-Qaeda, did we, we invented the Al-Qaeda? Yeah, because that was uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, and so he was considered, at the time, Osama bin Laden was considered a freedom fighter. <laughs> Do you remember that? Remember those newspaper headlines, around? You might be too young. Did you ever see those, though? People well, have, I saw them after the fact. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I was too young when they came out, but... People yeah. have tweeted out those. I've seen those tweeted out, uh, the headlines. Uh, freedom fighter, and it's a picture of Osama bin Laden and how he's working with the CIA. Uh, so here's, uh, so I just want to remind everybody how this happened, how we got into Afghanistan. That's how the Taliban got created. We created them to fight Russia. Uh, immediately after the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the rationale for invading Afghanistan was clear. Wipe out Al-Qaeda and overthrow the Taliban government. No way this could go wrong. I bet we're in and out in about six months. Tops. Uh, even though none of the hijackers or planners were Afghans, the Bush administration categorized Taliban leaders as terrorists because they had given Al Qaeda sanctuary and refused to hand over its ringleader, Osama bin Laden. They did not refuse to hand over their ringleader. What the Taliban says was, sure, we'll give you Osama bin Laden. Show us the proof that they did it. The United States refused to do that. Uh, because I think they wanted to go into Afghanistan and they really weren't that interested in getting Osama bin Laden. Uh, and right, right, Ryan, would you agree with that assessment? They were interested in going into a lot of places. <laughs> Afghanistan was one of them. Just one of them. Yeah. They were interested in launching a whole new American century project, which is what they did. Yep. And, and they did it. Um, within six months, now this is from the Washington post within six months, the leaders of Al Qaeda and the Taliban were dead, captured, or in hiding. All done. I guess we could pull out. Whoops. Instead of withdrawing, 
the United States government started to blur its strategic objective, something that would persist for the next 19 years. It's almost like we weren't actually there to help anybody. <laughs> it's almost like we were there to make sure a stream of cash flowed into the pockets of the people who pull the strings on our elected leaders, meaning the military industrial complex and Wall Street. Isn't that weird? I think that's weird. Uh, so I just want to let you know that this isn't new. Uh, and what no one's really ever talked about, even though it was a news at the time, the Afghanistan papers, it barely made a blip. And what did the Afghan paper what did the Afghan papers show us? Well, I'm going to show you what the Afghan. So the Afghan papers showed us that this was all a big lie. So a confidential trove of government documents reveals that senior U.S. officials failed to tell the truth about the war in Afghanistan throughout the 18 year campaign, making rosy pronouncements they knew to be false and hiding unmistakable evidence that the war had become unwinnable. So that was every administration. That's from George Bush to Barack Obama and Joe Biden to Donald Trump and now Joe Biden. They've been lying all along, 100%. Lying. So you'll get, you'll get, out, you'll get kicked off of Twitter uh, for posting misinformation. But Joe Biden, Barack Obama, uh, they'll, uh, they'll never lose. Anybody lying about the wars... The Defense Department, they still have their Twitter account and their Facebook pages, although they've been lying top false pronouncements that they knew were false about the war. So nobody ever has to pay the price. Again, if you lie at the behest of the establishment, there's never a price to pay. So just to let you know how bad it was, this last 20-year war, how bad it's been, we were devoid of a fundamental understanding of Afghanistan. We didn't know what we were doing, said the three-star army general who served as the White House's Afghan war czar during the Bush and Obama administrations. We were devoid of fundamental understanding. We didn't know what we were doing. They didn't know who the enemy were, was. Did you know that? They were, he admitted that, too. We didn't know who our enemies were and who our friends were. We didn't know. We didn't know what our mission was. They didn't know what their mission was because there wasn't one. He added, what, we were, what are we trying to do here? We didn't have the foggiest notion of what we were undertaking. If the American people knew the magnitude of this dysfunction, thousands of lives lost, who will say this was in vain? It's unbelievable. There's the guy saying we didn't have the foggiest notion of what we were undertaking. Didn't matter because they weren't undertaking anything. What were they undertaking? They were t funneling two trillion dollars from the American Treasury to the military industrial complex and Wall Street. That's what they were doing. What is the point of these 700 military bases? What is the point of the eight wars we're in? What is the point of bombing Somalia and Yemen? and Libya, and Syria, and Afghanistan. The point is to transfer $2 trillion to the pockets of the military-industrial complex. And that's a fact. That is the point of all this. And to steal resources from poor countries who can't fight back. That is the point. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't have the foggiest notion that's the guy, the three-star general. The three-star general who worked for Bush and Obama. We didn't have the foggiest idea what we were doing. That's the world's strongest military in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Say, we don't know what we're doing. Since 2001, more than 775,000 U.S. troops Soldiers have been deployed to Afghanistan, many repeatedly. Of those, 2,300 died and 20,589 were wounded in action. 
The documents also contradict a long chorus of public statements from U.S. presidents, military commanders, and diplomats who assured Americans year after year that they were making progress in Afghanistan and the war was worth fighting. So is Barack Obama going to lose his Twitter account huh. over that? Just Trump, right? Barack Obama's not going to lose his Twitter account. Joe Biden's not going to lose his Twitter account. Uh, any of the military commanders and diplomats who assured us year after year that they were making progress in Afghanistan and that the war was worth fighting, they knew that was a lie. So they were, again, the biggest uh, dispensers of misinformation is the government. The second is the establishment media. It's not YouTubers and random Twitter people or MAGA uh, uh, TikTok accounts. The biggest disseminators of disinformation and lies is the government and then the establishment media, which is why them banning anybody from Twitter or Facebook is a joke. Every data point, every data point now, everybody knows this, by the way. So everybody in the media knows this. Every data point was altered to present the best picture possible. An army colonel who served as a senior counterinsurgency advisor to U.S. military commanders told the government interviewers every data point was altered, meaning we were lying. We were manipulating every data point to lie to the American people, to keep two trillion dollars flowing into the pockets of the military industrial complex. We found the stabilization strategy and the programs used to achieve it were not properly tailored to the Afghan context. Huh. And successes in stabilizing Afghan districts rarely lasted longer than the physical presence of coalition troops and civilians. That's from May 2018. We don't invade poor countries to make them rich, said U.S. diplomat who served as a special envoy to Afghanistan under Bush and Obama. We don't invade authoritarian countries to make them democratic. We invade violent countries to make them peaceful. And we clearly failed in Afghanistan. Let's go drop a bunch of bombs. Let's drop 26,000 bombs to bring peace. <laughs> this is amazing. It's amazing. We invade other countries for their natural resources. That's what we do. We invade other countries to steal their natural resources and to funnel money to the military-industrial complex. The president's failed miserably. The United States has allocated hundreds of billions of dollars to build up Afghanistan, more than is spent adjusted for inflation to revive the whole of Western Europe with the Marshall Plan after world. We've spent more money in Afghanistan to, quote unquote, build up their society than we spent to build, rebuild Western Europe after World War Two. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's nuts. U.S. officials tried to create from scratch a democratic government in Kabul modeled after their own in Washington. It was a foreign concept to the Afghans who were accustomed to tribalism, monarchism, communism, and Islamic law. The money gusher of aid that Washington spent on Afghanistan also gave rise to historic levels of corruption. So we're pumping billions and hundreds of billions of dollars into the one of the poorest countries in the world, the most corrupt. And it turns out to be completely corrupted. They take that money and they steal it. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Our biggest single project, sadly and inadvertently, may be the development of mass corruption, said top U.S. diplomat in Kabul. Once it gets to the level I saw when I was there, it's unbelievably hard and outright impossible to fix it. So this was 10 years ago that guy was serving. He said this. It was a decade ago. He said the corruption is unbelievable. It's mass corruption. Keep throwing hundreds of billions of dollars there. But whatever you do, don't relieve student debt loan here. And whatever you do, don't give people money for homes. So we'll keep them under bridges. So if you get, there are 600,000 people in the United States who are considered homeless. That's the number, roughly. Yeah. If you gave each of them $1,000 a month for a, pub, for a housing stipend, it would cost $7.2 billion a year. <laughs> That's it. If you want to give 600,000 people $1,000 a month, 12 months 
it would cost $7.2 billion. Do you see the money? We spent $2 trillion. They won't even spend a, a, a pittance of what we send to Afghanistan. $300 million a day for 20 years we've sent to Afghanistan. $300 million a day we've sent to Afghanistan for 20 years. Uh, no military trainers express confidence that the Afghan army or police could ever fend off, much less defeat the Taliban on their own. More than 60,000 members of Afghan security forces have been killed. Casualty rates that U.S. commanders have called unsustainable. A national senior council official said there was constant pressure from the Obama White House and the Pentagon to produce figures to show the troop surge of 2009 to 2011 was working despite hard evidence to the contrary. Barack Obama wanted to lie to the public, and he did, about war. Did he lose his Twitter account? So this idea that Donald Trump is the only liar and he's the only dangerous liar Again, you're a chump if you believe that. You're a chump of the highest order. It was impossible to create good metrics. We tried using troop numbers, train, violence levels, control of territory, and none of it painted an accurate picture. The metrics were always manipulated for the duration of the war. So your government has been constantly lying at the top of their lungs. That means Barack Obama and George Bush, Joe Biden, Dick Cheney, Donald Trump, Mike Pence, they've been lying to you at the top of their lungs about Afghanistan. Even when casualty counts and other figures looked bad, the senior NSC officials said the White House and Pentagon would spin them to the point of absurdity. <laughs> Suicide bombings in Kabul were portrayed as a sign of the Taliban's desperation that the insurgents were too weak to engage in direct combat. Meanwhile, a rise in U.S. troop deaths was cited as proof that American forces were taking the fight to the enemy. Constant lying. And I just want to, so, so this idea that the establishment cares about lying or that they cared about Trump lying or that they're afraid that someone might spread in misinformation, what they are afraid of is losing the narrative. And that's why they're using such crude forms of control like censorship, outright censorship now. And you have shit libs from coast to coast who are, cheering it on. Keith Oberman wants me censored from all platforms in the name of hating Trump. So uh, the Afghanistan war was an um, unmitigated disaster. It, it wasn't planned to be anything but. Uh, the, the Afghan papers revealed Joe Biden and Barack Obama to be liars and propagandists and war criminals. Who squandered two trillion dollars for nothing. And so now here's a here's a thread. So I'm going to show you a thread. This is from someone who uh, from this Twitter thread uh, did two tours if we're to believe the Twitter thread, did two tours in Afghanistan, and uh, the information that they share is quite compelling. So let me, this is from uh, Laura Jadid. And here's, she said, I know how bad the Taliban is. I know what they do to women and, li women and little boys. I know what they're going to do to the interpreters and the people who cooperated us with us. It's awful. It's bad. But we are leaving, and all I feel is grim relief. Let me just, here's where she started. She said, I deployed in Afghanistan twice, once in 2008 and once in 2009 and 10. It was already obvious that the Taliban would sweep through the very instant that we left. And here we are today. So that confirms what the Afghan paper said. The Afghan paper said that uh, the Afghan soldiers could not hold off the Taliban. Nobody thought they would. Do we have a group? Uh, and so there you go. I know how bad the Taliban is. I know what they do to women and little boys. I know what they're going to do to the interpreters and the people who cooperated with us. It's awful. It's bad. But we are leaving. And all I feel is grim relief. 
Afghanistan is a dusty, beige nightmare of a place full of proud, brave people who did not effing want us there. We called them hajis and worse, and they were better than we were, braver and stronger and smarter. I remember going through the phones of the people we detained and finding clip after clip of Bollywood musicals, women singing in fields of flowers. Rarely did I find anything incriminating. I remember finding propaganda footage cut together from the Soviet invasion and our own Operation Enduring Whatever and laughing about how stupid the Afghans were to not know we aren't the Russians. And then eventually realizing... I was the stupid one. I remember how every year the U.S. would have to decide how to deal with the opium fields. You could let them alone, and then the Taliban would shake the farmers down and use the money to buy weapons. Or you could carpet bomb the fields, and then the farmers would just join the Taliban. Or you could give the farmers fertilizer as an incentive to grow wheat instead of opium poppy. And the farmers would sell the fertilizer to the Taliban, who used it to make explosives for IEDs that could destroy a million-dollar MRAP and maim everyone inside. I remember we weren't allowed to throw batteries away because people who worked on base would go through the trash and collect hundreds of dead batteries, wire them together so they had just enough juice for one charge, and use that charge to detonate an IED. I remember the look on my roommate's face after she got back from cutting the dead bodies of two soldiers out of an MMWV that got blown up by an IED, and I have always imagined was made with fertilizer from an opium farmer and detonated with 100 thrown-out batteries. And now we are leaving, and the predictable thing is happening the Taliban surging in and taking it all back. They have what you can't buy or train. They have patience and bloody-mindedness that warrants more respect than we ever gave them. I am team get the F out of Afghanistan, which, as a friend pointed out to me today, has always been team Taliban. It's team Taliban or team stay forever. There is no third team. So I'm sitting here reading these sad effing tweets about the suffering in Afghanistan and the horror of the encroaching Taliban and how awful it is that this is happening. But I can't stop feeling this grim happiness. Like finally, you fuckers, finally, you have to see it too. No more blown up soldiers. No more Bollywood videos on phones whose owners are getting shipped to God knows where. No more hypocrisy. No more pretending it meant anything. It didn't. It didn't mean a fucking thing. So there you go. Uh, And there are still people today who want us to stay there. They they want us to they they want us to uh, occupy the entire world. A lot, there's lots of uh, a lot of those people. Um, what, anything you want to add to this, Ron? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of those people because, I mean, first of all, we are such a propagandized nation when it comes to you know issues of war. I mean, we are as as propagandized as it gets. We have a, a strongly pro-war media, and it's a really easy sell because people want. People want to in the, entertain this idea. There's always a good guy and a bad guy. There's always a good guy and a bad guy. It's a hard sell when you're saying the truth that sometimes there's no good guys. Sometimes there's only bad guys. Sometimes it's like, yeah, the Taliban are bad guys, but we're not helping anybody. We've been there for 20 years. We weren't there to help anybody. We're there uh, at the behest of the profits of the military industrial complex. And Smedley Butler wrote the book a long, long time That's ago. That's right. War is a racket. The Jimmy Dore Show is coming to a city near you August 28th. We're in Las Vegas at the Plaza. And we just added another show in Portland. We're there in Portland on September 10th and 11th. October 3rd, we're at Harlow's in Sacramento. More dates being added. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets. See you at a live show. Mm